All right, we'll go ahead and begin. My name is Samira Robles. I am from the um, a first year coordinator at the Office of Admissions. And today we're just gonna have um, Dean Heath and three of his students who will be talking a little bit more about Watson College of Education uh, for our Seahawk talk. Today, I'm just gonna be the monitor, uh, just kind of monitoring everything. So if you do have any questions uh, during the presentation, please use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the screen. Um, you're more than welcome to just ask any questions. We'll answer all those questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, again, please do not feel shy. This is the moment for you to ask questions. This is the opportunity to kind of get to know more about being a student at UNCW, being a Watson student. And Dean Heath will be sharing so much information. Um, other than that, um, I'll go ahead and let Dean start with everything. Good evening. My name is Dean Heath and thumbs up if you can see my screen. Beautiful. All right. So um, welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a glorious evening here in Wilmington. Um, I am in the building that you're looking at right now. And even though uh, it's Friday night, six o'clock, uh, I am actually still excited to be in this building because of what this building means to me. Um, and let's actually talk a little bit about why uh, this building is so important to me. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a graduate of UNCW. I was a community college transfer student in where I studied business and marketing. Uh, and then I came back to Watson uh, to work on my graduate degree. So I've got a master's degree in education in higher education because I like to work with college students and those uh, aspiring to be college students. And I completed my first graduate degree here in this building uh, so it's, it's, it's like a homecoming being at work uh, because of all the great memories I have on campus and in this building. Uh, you can see I'm also working on another graduate degree uh, for instructional technology. Uh, so I don't want to change careers. I just want to do more for uh, the students like yourselves um, and, and our current students. So uh, there's always something to learn, but I, I don't tell you this to brag about myself. Look at all the degrees I've got. Uh, I tell you this because I can talk to you from uh, many different perspectives. I can talk to you from a current student perspective, an undergraduate perspective, um, a, a graduate student perspective, a transfer student perspective, an alum perspective, a, a staff perspective. So I've got a lot of hats that I've worn uh, that all say UNCW in one way or another. So chances are, if you have a curiosity or a question, uh, I, I may have the answer, but if I don't have the answer, I've got a colleague or a resource that can help provide that answer. So um, please reach out to me. You've got my email address here at the bottom, uh, but please, if you have curiosities in the realm of education, uh, I do want uh, an opportunity to engage with you. So with all of my experience, uh, in and around UNCW and the College of Education, people ask me about my favorite things on campus. And this image is one of my favorite spots on campus. Now, of course, the Watson College is my number one favorite spot. Uh, and we're gonna see that here in just a minute. But before we do that, this is one of my favorite spots on campus. And this picture was taken during one of my favorite days on campus. This was our involvement carnival. And if you are interested in being part of a group, a club, an organization, if you're looking for a core group of friends, this is the place to find it. Every possible opportunity to engage with folks on and around campus is this day. And uh, of course, everybody gets free stuff, uh, but you meet the people who you're going to be spending uh, your free time with over the course of the next few years. Uh, so it's one of my favorite days. It's always a very hot day. Uh, so the Watson booth always gives out like bottles of water or um, popsicles or something nice and icy. Uh, another favorite of mine, um, intramural sports. So when I was an undergrad student, I played intramural flag football. My team won zero games, but we had a lot of fun losing. Um, and I am actually still friends with most of the people that were on the team with me that year. Uh, the picture that you're looking at is not flag football. It's battleship. Uh, and it's a great idea. I've never played it, but I've watched. Um, and they literally put canoes in the swimming pool, buckets of water. You try to sink the other person's battleship. A lot of fun, but we've got some great intramurals. Um, I also love movies. Anybody else like movies? Yeah, everybody loves movies. Uh, this is our movie theater here on campus. And whether they're screening a student-made film, an educational film, 
or a film that is literally just for fun, um, it's always a good time in Lumina Theater. And then obviously you come to school at the beach, you gotta take a full advantage of what the beach has to offer. Whether you like to go sit on the beach, whether you like to go swimming, whether you like to go surfing, whether you like to go kayaking, whether you wanna go uh, stand up paddle boarding, whatever the case is, you gotta take full advantage of being this close to the water. So um, it's a little bit about me, a little bit about my favorite things from UNCW. Um, I wanna call our Watson student leaders that are with us uh, to introduce themselves. And uh, then you'll have an opportunity um, to ask questions live or you can pop them in the chat um, and, and get the curiosities that you have from current students answered. So let's go ahead and have uh, Kaylin start us off. Hi guys, my name is Kaylin. I am from Apex, North Carolina, which is near Raleigh. Um, I am a junior right now. My expected graduation date is spring of 2023. I am getting my degree in special education with a minor in applied behavioral analysis. And so with that, where I see myself in five years is hopefully becoming a BCBA after I finish my master's in ABA. And yeah, hopefully that works out. Thank you, Kaylin. How about Chloe? Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm an elementary education major and I'm planning on doing a concentration in language arts. Uh, this is my first year at UNCW. I am from Huntersville, North Carolina. And I see myself in five years, probably either staying in Wilmington or going back to Huntersville as an elementary school teacher. Love it. And how about Caroline? Hi, I'm Caroline and I am from the Hampstead area, so I'm pretty local. Um, I'm a senior majoring in elementary education with a concentration in language arts. Um, I'm expected to finish in May, which is really exciting. And so with that, where I see myself in five years is hopefully in a classroom of my own, kind of around the area with some teaching experience under my belt and hopefully like looking into pursuing a master's at that point. That's fantastic, Caroline. Uh, and on all three of you have great experiences to share, uh, personal stories to, uh, to share with us. Um, as we're going along in my presentation, um, I, I'd much rather have a conversation. So if there are things that you guys want to add to, uh, to the, the information that I'm giving, feel free to unmute yourself and add those items in. Uh, and then, of course, we'll do a, a formal Q&A at the completion of the event. So um, we are an education college like no other. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we've got great high quality programs and we're gonna talk about all the programs that we offer, but every single one of our programs is top notch. Uh, we have dedicated and engaged faculty and, and actually you're looking at a picture of most of the faculty and staff of the Watson College of Education. We are a fantastic group of educators, uh, but all of your faculty members are practitioners of what they're teaching. So not only are they doing research in, in the different topics of interest, but they have all been teachers in the subject that they are teaching. So for example, uh, all of your elementary educators have been kindergarten through sixth grade teachers in schools. Uh, all of your special education professors have been K through 12 special education teachers. Now, why is that important? Well, number one, that means they've gone through an educator preparation program just like you're gonna be going through. They've sat in your shoes, or I guess they've sat in your seats, they've, they've stood in your shoes, uh, but that means they've had the same questions that you're probably gonna ask themselves. So they're gonna answer those questions before you even know you want the answer. They're gonna guide you, they're gonna mentor you, they're gonna support you, but not just while you're an education student in their class. As you continue your education at UNCW, the, the professors that you had during your first year, your second year, they're gonna continue to support you. But that doesn't stop when you change that tassel from one side of your cap to the other. We're going to continue to support you as you have a classroom of your own. So one of the things that I think really separates us out from other universities are early and often field experiences. These are meaningful experiences that will help sculpt you into the best possible educator. Um, so early 
is important because if you get into uh, an elementary classroom for the first time at the end of your junior or beginning of your senior year, and you're thinking, oh, maybe I don't actually want to be an elementary teacher, then you've, you've got a limited amount of time. So early field experiences are crucial because if you decide you want to try something else, you've got time because we've got students that start field experiences as early as their very first year at UNCW. Now, it's not common for people to start field experiences their very first year, but it is an option if that's something you'd like to look into. And we'll talk more about that as well. Um, most students start field experiences sophomore year uh, or junior year, depending on the program. Uh, we have an extensive partnership network with over 200 schools in over 12 districts. So that way, when it comes time for you to do these field experiences, you can go to different types of schools. You can go to small schools, big schools, schools that are really into the arts, schools that are really into tech, schools that are, are really into you know, theater or you know, whatever the case is. Um, and then I mentioned earlier, we are going to continue to support you long after you have left our classrooms and you've got a classroom of your own. Average class size in Watson, 20 students per class, uh, which is fantastic uh, for major classes. Uh, faculty student ratio is fantastic as well. And then we've got that beginner teacher support system already in place uh, for three plus years. So the professional development is already uh, in place to ensure that you are successful. So this is Teacher Legacy Hall. And those are the front doors. This is uh, obviously not a live view of campus because it is dark outside right now. Uh, but this is our, uh, our amazing building. You look up, you can see we've got these great skylights. Uh, we've got three floors of education. I'm trying not to make people motion sick uh, by going a little slow here. Uh, but we've got these great exhibits in the building. This is our space. And Honestly, you could teach education in any, in any building on campus. We've got amazing buildings on campus, but the value of education, the university uh, has put on education, the value uh, is such that they didn't give us any old building. They've given us this incredible facility that has so much going for it. It's not just a pretty place. It does have very functional spaces as well. Uh, but people walk in here and this is not what they expect. They don't expect to see a beautiful building like this. Um, if you've taken campus tours of other campuses, um, this is probably not what you've seen at other universities. Uh, students, uh, watching student leaders, would you agree? We've got a fantastic building. Absolutely. Yeah, so, it's so pretty. Yeah. I love to like go in there and study sometimes. So Chloe, that, that exact point. Uh, we've got these great study areas on the second and third floor that are just available. Go and sit down in a comfy chair, read a book with natural sunlight coming in. Um, I'm a big believer in utilizing natural sunlight. I think it, it's so much better for studying. Um, but on one of those study areas, we also do a practice called Mindful Mondays, where you can go and do five minutes of guided meditation and five minutes of stretching, and it really sets the pace for a successful week. And that's open to students, faculty, and staff. Um, so that first floor of the education building is called Teacher Legacy Hall. And part of what Teacher Legacy Hall has uh, are resources. One of those resources is our Student Success Center, uh, which is the Advising and Leadership Office. And that's where you get your dedicated advisor, somebody that is very well aware of your program, but they don't just want to help you plan your next semester. They want to make sure that you've got all the resources to be successful as a person uh, on a college campus. Uh, if you find that you're struggling, they're going to make sure you've got the resources to be successful, whether that's in class and relationships, um, managing stress. So this is like a one stop shop for student success for Watson students. Um, they also um, uh, house our newsletter, uh, student leadership opportunities, uh, engagement opportunities, and we're going to talk about these as well. So just uh, some quick stats on Watson uh, at UNCW. We are always listed as a top five educator preparation program in North Carolina every year, top five. Uh, the Board of Education here in North Carolina gives us an exemplary designation. Only seven institutions in North Carolina carry that designation. Uh, I mentioned our partnership. Um, something I think is really cool is you have the ability to customize your education. Now, every institution offers you the ability to add a minor 
to customize your education. But for example, with our elementary program, um, we have the ability to add uh, a level of customization. Uh, so I, I think actually both of our Watson student leaders that are elementary are also doing language arts, um, which is their, their added customization. But if you didn't want to do language arts, I mean, there's a whole list of ways you can customize that elementary education um, to, to suit your goals and your needs. Uh, we have the ability for you to explore your creativity through our curriculum materials center. So it's like a Michael's craft store, kind of compressed a little bit and shoved into one corner of our building. They've got all of the resources to help you um, take an idea you have for a lesson you want to teach and bring it to fruition. Whether it's this much of an idea or you know exactly what it is and you just need somebody to help you do it, build it, plan it, explore it. Uh, we've been the recipient of the Krista McAuliffe Award for Teacher Excellence. And Krista McAuliffe, for those of you who don't know, she was an amazing educator, supposed to be the very first teacher in outer space. Unfortunately, back in 1986, her ship, the Challenger, did not successfully leave the Earth's orbit, uh, and it did explode. Uh, but she was such an amazing person that they named an award after her. And that award is given to two schools in the country every year, uh, and we've been the recipient of that award. Uh, we've got a lot of students that will come back to us after a few years of being in the classroom, uh, and we help them with national board certification. Uh, a lot of our grads go on to be teacher of the year or principal of the year in their district. I keep harping on field experiences being early and often. It is that important. Uh, but then across the bottom, it also talks about, um, about jobs after graduation. Now, obviously, there is a shortage uh, for teachers in the state of North Carolina, but that Setting that aside, we also have amazing students that go through our programs that become amazing educators and the principals, the superintendents, the HR offices in North Carolina, they know that. So when we host uh, in-person job fairs, we have something like 25 different districts that come here to talk to our students. And they don't just wanna to talk to the, the seniors who are getting ready to graduate. They wanna to talk to the junior students, the sophomore students, because they wanna go ahead and get to know our students and they want our students get, to get to know them early on because they want you to, to want to work for them. They want you to be part of their district because they know you're gonna be successful and they know that you're gonna make a huge impact on their students in their school district. This is our ed lab. So we were the first university to have an ed lab in North, uh, North Carolina. Uh, we're still one of the only ones that do, but we serve over 400 uh, community members every year. And these are uh, children from the community who need a little extra help. Uh, so our students get their first uh, bit of teaching experience tutoring kids from the community. So if you are interested in being an elementary, a special education or a middle grades educator, uh, this is where you'll do your tutoring. And uh, if you're interested in teaching secondary education, you'll actually go to one of our partnership schools for your tutoring. Uh, but it is an amazing place. Uh, if ever I'm having a rough day, just meeting, 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 no time. Um, at the end of all of those meetings, this is where I go. Because just the feeling you get from being in this room, in this space, absorbing all of the, all of the care and the knowledge, um, it just makes you feel better. Um, but all of the materials are in here that you might need for a lesson, whether it's technology, whether it's manipulatives, um, they've got their own mini library in here. Uh, it's all available to you. Um, and we hope that all of our students take full advantage of it. So what programs do we offer? So we offer education of young children, that's birth through kindergarten, special education, and we actually offer two different tracks for special education, general curriculum and adapted curriculum. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the difference and you're interested in special education, I would be more than happy to have a more in-depth conversation with you. But based on the population of students you want to teach would depend on which one of those you go into. Uh, elementary education is kindergarten through sixth grade. That's our most popular program. Uh, middle grades education at six through nine. Secondary education is nine through 12. And little side note, secondary education, you're not actually getting a degree from the Watson College of Education. If you want to be a high school math teacher, you get a degree in math. You want to be a high school English teacher, you get a degree in English. It's pretty simple. Um, but while you're working on that math, English, whatever degree, 
you're still coming to us in Watson. We're going to help you with how to be a teacher, how to handle classroom management, how to help with student development, how to do lesson planning, all of the things that go into teaching that are not math or English. Uh, we also offer additional K-12 programs in foreign language health, uh, fourth language, PE and health, and also music. Um, now, there's something that you don't see here, and that's art. If you're interested in teaching art, you would get an art degree as an undergrad. Uh, and then after you graduate or as you're getting ready to graduate, you'll enroll into our uh, Master of Arts in Teaching program for art education. And that's only one year additional after you've graduated with your undergrad. So let's talk minors and certificates. So uh, we offer a lot of minors that students that are not education majors take full advantage of as well, but some of our education students um, add on a minor, whether it's uh, applied behavior analysis. And um, I think Kaylin mentioned, yeah, uh, that that's the, uh, the minor that she's interested in. Uh, but there's some great minors around the university. These are just the ones that come out of the Watson College of Education. Um, Esports has become very popular. Um, and a, a certificate or minor in esports will help you bring an esports club or team into the school where you're teaching. Uh, so for the past year, uh, you, your, your high school football, your middle school basketball, your middle school volleyball, they've not had the same opportunities uh, that were awarded to everyone else because of time uh, with COVID. But esports clubs can still play and participate. Um, we have esports clubs here on campus. Our Call of Duty team is ranked top 10 in the country right now. Uh, and last year, our number one player uh, actually got a full ride. He graduated. He got a full ride to get his MBA at another university here in North Carolina to, place, to play Call of Duty for them. That's, that's a true story. I love that story. Um, leadership studies is a great minor, regardless of what major you are, whether you're in education, business, health. Uh, arts doesn't matter. There's always going to be some sort of ladder you want to climb in every industry. Uh, online teaching and learning, hugely important, especially now, but always been important. Uh, and then teaching English as a second language, great program uh, there as well. So graduate programs. Now, wait a minute. Why are we talking graduate programs? I don't have an undergraduate degree yet. That's exactly what you're thinking, and that's okay. But if you know that your end goals require a graduate degree, let us know early on because we can pair you with faculty members from our grad programs that can help you um, help you dive into whatever topics of research you're interested in, or you can help them with their research if you have a common interest. Uh, you might be a published writer before you graduate your undergrad degree. You might go to conferences with those faculty members. So take full advantage of those relationships that we can help you build. And then, of course, when it's time to get that graduate degree, we want you to come back and be with us as well. Um, have, have any of our Watson student leaders thought about doing international study? Anybody? Yeah? Okay, good, good. So this is the one thing I didn't do uh, as an undergrad student that I wish I had done. Now, why didn't I do it? Well, there's one reason and only one reason. I didn't have any money. But had I gone to the information session, I would have learned that there are opportunities to make it very cost efficient. Um, there are grants, there are scholarships, there are great ways that if this is something you have an interest in, that we can make it happen. Uh, the university has great study abroad opportunities, uh, but the ones I've listed on screen are education faculty led. So you're, you're not going to Costa Rica for a whole semester. Uh, you're not going to Sweden for a whole year, uh, but you're going during breaks. So you go during fall break, spring break, summer break with our faculty members. So a uh, great example, you go to Belize in the summertime, you go for a week with one of our elementary education faculty members, and you teach in classrooms in Belize while you're there. And it's not just teaching the students, you're also uh, leaving behind a legacy because the teaching tactics that you use might be things that their teachers are not using. So they may pick up on something that works really well for you that they can continue using. And, and again, your legacy is passed on for generations of students. The education learning community. So this is one of the best kept secrets in Watson. It's really not a secret, but uh, if you're looking to um, 
to get a jump start on your education. If you're looking for a community of friends in education, if you're looking for a way to start those field experiences early, this is the way to do it. Now, the, the picture that you're looking at shows uh, students in Keystone House um, hanging out between classes, but this could actually be an extension of the classroom because the way it works is a uh, learning community is a living and learning community. So the way it works is you're in, you live with the same people that you take two classes with during your first year. So the conversation goes from the classroom to the dorm, to the classroom, to the dorm, to the classroom, to the dorm, hopefully. And you continue talking about these topics, but some of the best opportunities that come from this, uh, this community are, um, extra socialization opportunities, assistance with transition to college life. We give you a mentor who has been through the program before, um, and we have great uh, experiences for you, whether it's the breakfast at the beginning of the semester, team building opportunities with the low ropes course or kayaking. Um, but when it comes down to it, the biggest reasons that you would do this are uh, common goals with your peers, but more importantly, those two classes that I mentioned to you, because those two classes are gonna allow you to start working with Watson faculty and staff during your first semester, allow you to start doing field experiences during your second semester. So early and often field experiences. Uh, Chloe, did you wanna add anything about the ELC? Um, yeah, like I love it so far. And um, like you said, um, when you said about like the dorm being an extension of the classroom, that made me think because Right now, one of the two classes that we have with the learning community is online. And like, we'll go to the bath. I'll go to the bathroom after that class, and everyone's in there just talking about like what we were talking about in class. Yeah, yeah, excellent. It's like, it's like oh, it's, it's like every week. It's like a little after class chat. You can never be rid of us. We are yeah. always helping you with uh, with whatever topics of interest are going on. Um, so thank really you for nice. that uh, that added. Uh, added information. And Chloe, at the end, uh, when we do our q and I, I want you to go into a little more detail on uh, your experience as an ELC student and uh, what the process was like to apply and get in. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to talk about some other student leadership opportunities. Uh, KDP is our International Honor Society and our Watson Student Leaders Program. Uh, it, they're both amazing. Uh, we've got three uh, Watson student leaders on the call with us right now, uh, but this picture was taken a couple years ago. Uh, the Watson student leaders are over 100 students strong. They're an amazing group. They do professional development. They do community service. They do uh, personal development. They do team building. They have fun. Um, it, it's really a testament to what these students want to do as to how they're able to, to accomplish their goals, um, but they're an amazing group, and um, uh, Kaylin, Chloe, Caroline, if any of you want to talk just a little bit about the Watson Student Leader Program, um, now would be a great time for that. Yeah, so I can start. Um, I found out about it my freshman year, so I got in it early. Um, it's really easy to apply to. You just have to kind of fill out some information about yourself and why you think that you would be interested in the program. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure they accept everyone that has a good application. Um, and I there so there's different committees. I'm in the professional development committee, and I really like that one. We do lots of fun. Um, right now, everything's online with Zoom, but even so, it's still very interesting. I've got to chat with teachers that have had so much experience, and they come back and tell us some of the things that um, benefited them being like a first year teacher. Some advice to us. So that's just some things that I really like about it. Um, I really like all the events that we have like there are like there's a lot of different options so like it's not just all on one topic like some of the professional develop development events have been like on mental health um, like working in the classroom and just a variety of things so I like that it's you've got variety. Yeah so to add with they, to what they said um, I've also been a member more through COVID, so it's been online um, and a lot of Zoom, but that's still been really fun and engaging. Like Kaylin said, we're on different committees, um, so we go to different like types of events like professional development, um, and those have been some of my favorite events, even though they were on Zoom, um, but they really kind of take what we're going through with like online teaching and a lot of like our education being on Zoom and online, um, so we've had 
um, professional development opportunities like to cater towards that to give us like resources about like teaching and in a virtual format, which has been really helpful. Now you guys are putting on an event this weekend, aren't you? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so um, every uh, every fall, uh, the Watson Student Leaders put on an event for uh, for educators, uh, for future educators, for current educators. And a couple of years ago, you guys did this great one uh, with a book drive, and we were able to donate. I don't even remember how many books, but we were able to donate uh, a ton of books to local schools in the area. So uh, it's not just events that benefit our students, but we're doing things that benefit uh, the community at large. So a lot of people ask about financial assistance for educators. Going to college is not cheap, but it's an investment in yourself. So how do we, how do we uh, decrease some of those costs? Well, depending on what you want to major in, there are forgivable loans for service, uh, and those are going to be the high need areas. Uh, so for example, special education, middle grades education, certain subjects of, of secondary education, um, if you are not familiar with College Foundation of North Carolina, their slogan is they help you plan, apply, and pay for college. And that pay for college section, uh, they've got a great scholarship search. Uh, depending on what county you're from, the Golden Leaf Foundation may be a great resource for you. The TEACH grant is great. Uh, but I, I always tell high school students that every, uh, every week during your senior year, you should apply to at least one scholarship. And they're like, wow, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, yeah, it might be a little bit of work, but it's it's all going to add up and, and make a difference in the end. You know, it's not it's about not putting all your eggs in one basket. It's about applying to this thousand dollar, this five hundred dollar, this two thousand dollar and letting them all add up. Uh, that's where you're going to get the best bang for your buck. Uh, but definitely apply for scholarships, um, whether they're scholarships internally on campus that we raise money for or external ones apply. So we want you to see for yourself. So the, the semester is winding down. There's less and less on campus, um, but the university's got a great uh, virtual tour. They do self-guided tours. There are still face-to-face -face campus tours you can do. Um, we do uh, what we call Visit Watson experiences, which are private visits where you can uh, add that to a campus tour, but email me and we'll work out those details. Uh, every semester we do uh, a couple of Watson preview days, which are kind of like an open house, but just for education students. Uh, and then once every semester we do our future teacher conference and future teacher conference is a full day. And uh, during that day, uh, there are some general sessions where everybody is together and we're, we're learning things as a big group. But then there are three different uh, times that you'll have breakout sessions. And you'll get to go to this speaker because you're interested in their topic, or you'll get to go to a presentation uh, with a, a faculty member who teaches in the major that you're interested in, or you'll get to go into our curriculum material center and build something or paint something or, or be creative. So there are lots of great sessions. Um, we are in the process of scheduling those right now. We're hoping that those are going to be face-to-face -face events for the spring semester. Uh, but if you're interested in going to one or all of those, just email me. I'll make sure you've got all of the details. So uh, at this point, I do want to open us up for questions. Um, and we will check the chat for questions. Uh, but this is a perfect opportunity for you to ask current students questions that are important to you. Uh, literally, people ask all the time if the food in the cafeteria is any good. Uh, they ask about um, about how hard are classes your first year. So if it's important to you, it's important to us. Don't think of your question as not being academic enough. So let's check the chat. It doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment, but I, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm going to add a link for those who are North Carolina students. I'm definitely, going to encourage you if you are especially if you're a current senior right now in high school um, to check the the cfnc website or the north carolina committee foundation for local scholarships um, i will tell you right many students sometimes forget about local scholarships and even just a little bit goes a long way so i'm going to add that to the chat so feel free to just save that for future references um, 
And then just kind of look at the qualifications and to see how depending some some scholarships match with certain universities and some scholarships are open to any university, depending where you go. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and and I'll, I know you do have a couple questions or maybe maybe you want your students to kind of talk a little bit more about their experience on campus, but in the meantime, please feel free to add questions in the Q&A. This is the moment for you to ask any questions, whether it's the university or admissions related or just in general, um, kind of what it is to be a student on campus. Yeah, so while we're waiting on people to pop questions in the Q&A, um, from our Watson student leaders, um, are you or were you in any clubs other than uh, Watson student leaders? I was not, uh, but I did do some of the like yoga. There was a yoga club and I went to that a few times. I wasn't part of it, but I did like go to it to just kind of like refresh. It was at night, so it was kind of nice. Um, but there's so many like different clubs that you can do that you don't have to be fully committed to, but they will allow you to go to like certain events if you're interested. Nice tip. Um, I'm not in any other clubs, but like one thing I do like to do is I like to do some of the fitness classes at the rec center. I do like I have one that I go to like on a regular basis. It's like Wednesday nights. And I, I really like that they're free. Yeah, I think as a college student, the everybody's motto is if it's free, it's for me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Caroline, how about you? Any clubs? Um, so not technically quite a club, but I'm a resident assistant on campus, so I'm heavily involved in housing, um, which there are like student organizations through that with like RHA. Um, but as an RA, I've worked in freshman areas, so I get to help um, freshmen in their like transition to college. Um, and we do a lot of like programming, coming up with fun events for them um, and things like that, so. Nice, and that definitely counts. Fun. Um, so when I was an undergrad student, I, I was not in any, uh, any formal clubs, but, you know, I did some intramurals, uh, from time to time. I went to the movie theater on campus a lot. Um, but there, there's, you know, like a few of you have said, there's so many things to get involved in. I feel like when students come in for their first semester, they, they go to the involvement carnival or they, they learn about all these different clubs and they join everything. And then as their time at, at UNCW goes along, they, uh, they kind of funnel out the things that weren't as important to them and dive in you know, full steam ahead to the ones that are important. Um, you have a question, so it might be a question for you. Um, okay. Is Watson a good fit for students interested in graduate programs that aren't teaching, for example, speech therapy, um, mm. around that field? Okay, so we do offer graduate programs that, are, that have nothing to do with teaching. Well, I guess ain't nothing to do with teaching because everything has something to do with teaching. But um, so, for example, uh, our uh, school administration master's program is not a teaching program, but it's still like a principal superintendent level um, uh, program. We also have higher education, uh, which was the first grad program that I did for students who want to work with college students. Now, that's not to teach as a professor, but every interaction that I have with a uh, with a student, there's an opportunity for me to uh, to teach something, to, to give them an opportunity to see me lead by example. So uh, while it's not a teaching program, um, it allows me to work with college students. Uh, we have instructional technology. And again, it's not a teaching program, but it's, it's learning to disseminate information in multiple different formats. Um, so your, your example, speech therapy, uh, we don't offer anything in speech therapy, um, but I, I know that there are universities that do, but just not within their education programs. So uh, we, we do have a lot of uh, special education students that want to go into speech or occupational therapy, um, and, and, I, and I love that, but we don't, and honestly, I don't know if the university offers speech or occupational therapy as an option with the College of Health and Human Services, but um, that's something that we could look into if you're interested in that. Uh, it may be that you would come to us for your undergrad in special education um, and then transfer to a, a different university for your grad program if we don't offer what it is that you want. 
Yeah, and, and right now, currently, it's in the works with speech therapy. Um, it hasn't been solidified or anything, but just kind of been more on the planning to see if it will get implemented. Um, but yeah, so we had Dean mentioned it typically, you know, student, I think the closest thing would probably be special education if you're interested in going to the education route um, and then going and pursuing that graduate program for speech therapy. And the good thing about that, if you are interested in that, we do have those pre-health programs so you can get, um, speak with academic, academic advisor while you do your special education program. So you make sure that you get your prerequisite courses that you need to go into speech therapy school making sure that you become a competitive candidate for that school as well. Um, so our, we have a great academic advisor. So regardless of what you want to do, even for grad school, it doesn't have to necessarily mirror exactly the same thing, but it just makes sure that you meet your prerequisite courses before applying for that grad school program. That's the, big, that's the key. And, and thank you for the question. Um, I always like engaging with students. And if I don't get to meet with you face to face, at least you pop the question in the chat for us. Um, so while you're adding more questions in, um, let's, uh, let's take another common question. And that common question is, what's the food like on campus? Um, so I lived on campus my freshman year and then I moved out. But when I was on campus, um, my favorite place to go was Dub's Cafe. I love their, um, they do like a different type of food. They switch it up every now and then. So sometimes it'll be like Mediterranean. Sometimes it'll be um, like some Indian food or Mexican. So they switch it up, which I really like. It's always something different, but then they also have like the typical burgers, sandwiches, fries. Um, and then WAG, my favorite place there was always the home cook section in the back. The mac and cheese, so good. Um, they have literally great food. It's like you're eating Thanksgiving every single day if you went to WAG. Now, speaking of Thanksgiving, last night WAG had WAG's Giving. And uh, I went to WAG's Giving one time as a graduate student, and it was incredible. I mean, there were prizes to win. There were shirts to give away. They have a literal uh, Thanksgiving meal, a feast for our students. And students start lining up early on in the day to attend. Uh, Caroline, Chloe, did either of you um, uh, attend a uh, WAG's giving? Yeah, I went last night. That was my first time going and it was really good. It was like an actual Thanksgiving meal. I was, I was like, not sure what to expect. I was like, I'm not going to get my hopes too high, but it definitely exceeded expectations. Big time campus tradition, WAG's giving. Um, I actually have a meal plan just like the students. And usually when I come into work on Mondays, uh, I'll look at the menu at WAG, and that will determine what restaurants I go to all week. Um, and we've got a brand new um, dining hall opened on campus, the Shore. Yeah, uh, I haven't eaten there yet, but uh, I've walked through a couple times and it smells really good. The food smells really good. So I'm excited to eat there at some point. Um, let's see, what, uh, what about your best advice for someone considering UNCW? Um, I would say, I mean, UCW was my only choice, so I didn't really have to choose to pick from anything, but I would say definitely if you have not visited the campus to do so, because during my visit, it was like, it just felt at home for me and I knew that's where I wanted to go. So I would definitely recommend at least coming to see the campus one time, go around the community, go downtown, check out some of the shopping places because everything is very local. You can really get to anywhere you need to go as long as it's not during rush hour traffic, but within like 10 to 15 minutes. But other than that, yes. Yeah, I definitely agree about visiting because it was when I visited that really like sold me and was like, yeah, this is where I want to go. And I think just kind of like, it gives you a great feel of like the vibe of the campus. And then one thing I really do love is like, it's a walkable campus. So like, there's nowhere where you have to take a car, you have to take a bus, like, and it's not too bad. Like I can get from one end to the other in like 15, 20 minutes. So I, I definitely like that part. When I was an undergrad, I brought my bike because I lived so close to campus, I couldn't park on campus, uh, but I would bike everywhere I needed to go. Caroline, best advice for somebody considering UNCW? You're almost done with us. What's your best advice? 
I know. So my best advice kind of goes with what they said with um, not only exploring the physical campus, but exploring the opportunities that are here as well. Because like we've been talking about, there are so many, um, whether that's student employment, like I'm doing RA shout out, um, um, whether that is all of like the organizations and clubs we've been talking about, like we literally have Quidditch, which is so cool. And I've never heard of that at any other school. Um, but yeah, just exploring like all the opportunities and things that are here and in the Wilmington area it's great good tip and i just added um the link so if you are i think the big key for everyone is to definitely um visit the campuses that you are applying to um you know especially if you're not able to we also have virtual tours that you can check out but i also added the link for you to register for in-person campus tour. We'll have more dates um, mid-December for spring semester if you can't do it this semester, but we also have self-guided tour packets if you're interested in just coming for a weekend, you and your family um, in Wilmington to kind of check out the area. Um, we also have a question. Uh, the question from a student says, are many of your students in the Honors College program? Mm. If so, how do they balance both programs? Do you know if any honors courses and education courses intersect? Um, so before I answer the question, uh, Chloe, I know you're in the, the ELC, uh, but uh, were either of you in the honors college your uh, first year? Caroline, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the honors college. Um, okay, so I was in the Honors College my first year. Um, so we lived in Cornerstone, which is right beside Keystone, which we've been talking about with the ELC. Um, with Honors, we all live in Cornerstone together, so everyone's right there. So kind of a similar experience with the living learning communities is you can literally go from class to back home to Cornerstone, and those like conversations continue. Um, it's really beneficial for like helping with work or like if you forget like, oh, what was the homework for that class? Like you can literally walk right beside or like walk right down the hall um, and find somebody. I think the question had to do with courses and honors. Um, so for me, a lot of the honors um, my first year and then like your second year intersect university studies wise. So there are like honors university studies. And then as far as education specific, um you can do like you can contract courses so you would find like an education course and an education professor and you like kind of talk through what you would do in that course like extra to go above and beyond to make it like honors level and it's like an honors contract that um covers your honors requirements too well said caroline uh the only thing i want to add is um, the Honors College is its own uh, living and learning community. So if you're considering the Honors College, you also have to consider whether the education learning community might be a good fit for you as well. Um, so the only downfall is you can't do both. Um, so the education learning community is amazing because it helps jumpstart your education. Uh, it gives you uh, uh, people with, with common goals that you're going to progress through your education with. Uh, honors College, also fantastic opportunities. Uh, you'll write an honors thesis, you'll do an honors project, um, but you, you would have to choose between one or the other. So my advice is we will offer information sessions, whether they're virtual or face-to-face, -face, um, but go to those information sessions uh, for, for any of the learning communities that you have an interest in and learn about them and make the best decision for you. Uh, as far as um, the education learning community, if once those applications are available, and I think that's March 1st, um, once those applications are available, uh, from the time you submit your application, uh, I try to get you an answer back within 24 hours. Uh, now, if you, if you submit on Saturday at 2 a.m., I'm probably not going to have you an answer by Sunday. <laughs> But I try to get you an answer back within 24 hours. Um, and the best advice there is if you know you want the education learning community, apply early because we do roll uh, admissions there. Um, if we fill up before you know, the first week, then you may have missed out. So come to information sessions and apply early for education learning community. Uh, but go to information sessions for all of them. Um, all right, here's the best question I'm going to ask you guys. 
why UNCW? I can start. So my main reason for also having UNCW as my only choice for college is because of the beach. The beach was one of my main deciders in choosing the college because it is so close. We do, um, there's lots of beach incorporated things um, through the campus, like beach week um, or beach blast is what it's called. And then also, I just really liked the environment of campus. I enjoy the like earthy aspect of it with all the trees and the waters and um different things like that through campus you feel very like it's very relaxing to even just sit anywhere on campus and do work get work done eat something um that's the main reason why i chose it kaylin do you ever take advantage of the wildlife preserve walk around in there i've never been no oh you've got to they've actually uh so a lot of our um our sciences use the wildlife preserve uh, but it's almost completely untouched. There's a path to walk through, but they actually have exhibits of carnivorous plants inside that you can check out. It's really kind of cool. Chloe, why UNCW? Um, well, I came from a really small high school. Like my graduating class was like 150 people. So I was, I didn't want anywhere that was too big, but I also wanted a little bit of a step up to get a little bit bigger. So I liked that the size of UNCW and how like because of the size, a lot of the classes are relatively small. Because like I think my biggest class has like 30 people in it right now. And I really liked that because then you can kind of do like get to know your teacher a little bit better and have more like more of a, like a classroom feel. Um, I also really liked the education program. That was a big thing for me. I liked how you get in the classroom earlier because that was a big the thing I was looking for in a school. I wanted to not have to wait to get in the classroom. And I'm going to start my next, my first field experience next semester. So I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. Caroline, why UNCW? So I chose UNCW specifically for Watson, actually. Um, so I'm pretty local to the area. Um, growing up, I started school in kindergarten and absolutely loved my kindergarten teacher. She was the best. Um, and she is a Watson alum. And then as I like progressed through school, like had the greatest teachers and the common denominator between them was that a lot of them were Watson alum. So five-year-old Caroline decided in kindergarten that she wanted to be a teacher and go to Watson and graduate from UNCW and Watson, just like my teachers, because they were amazing. Um, and shaped me into who I am and helped me grow and learn. So I'm here and that's why I chose UNCW. I love it. I say I had actually started in Watson College of Education, fun fact too. And so just like Caroline, I always says since I was in kindergarten, I've always wanted to be a teacher. But the beauty thing about UNCW, you get so involved in so many, you know, different areas. And that's one thing I definitely encourage you. And I bet you um, many of our students here will also encourage you to get involved, at least in one organization or just something, um, because that's when you start kind of growing beyond just like, of course, it's important to be in your, like to focus in your academics, but also growing your character and the person that you want to be. Um, and I think just in general, through my involvement, I still am education oriented. I'm here. I'm an admissions counselor. I want to make sure, I'm passionate in making sure high school students kind of have something solidified before graduating so they kind of know what route they want to do, whether it's that they want to come straight to us, right, or a local community college, or if they want to go to the military, kind of knowing your options, because again, there's not just one route that you have to take. Again, our career path, I know Dean's and I's career path will probably continue to change, um, which is the beauty about that. So just as a high school student, know that you don't have to just choose one thing and one thing only. And that's also an advice for my current college students, the same thing, right? Because you're going to have so many, um, you're going to be wearing so many hats, different roles as you grow. And then one thing that I definitely encourage you is to just be open to changing. And I love that Dean talked about how Watson really helps you 
figuring out and exposing you to different field experiences early on because that's one thing that I did appreciate about Watson is that since my freshman year I was always either in the academic classroom working with students tutoring or being in the learning lab whichever it was that helped me to realize um, to change my path for elementary ed and working more with high school ESL and that's the reason where I'm currently at so I definitely say Watson's a really great job and I appreciate them because they really try to bring in that applied learning early on so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into to see if you really like that um, major. Well said. But any other questions or anything else that you all want to add? I know it's kind of closing um, to our end mark. <laughs> no? <laughs> You guys did a fantastic job uh, engaging with our uh, our future Seahawks um, and, and answering my questions and answering their questions. Um, I always think that the most meaningful things that we do for our future students um, is to get them in, in um, get them on campus to visit, but also to let them engage with current students. So uh, for our, our current Watson student leaders that are on the call tonight, thank you guys so much. You guys did a great job. You always do a great job. You, you know that. Well, thank you all. Thank you, students. Um, again, good luck in finals. And Dean, thank you again for um, you know taking the initiative and running the presentation. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to contact um, Dean. That's Dean's email right there. It's Heath T at UNCW.edu. Um, and again, this uh, presentation is going to be recorded. I did add the link to the chat. So it's going to be our main admissions and just click visit campus and then kind of scroll down and then select past virtual events. And this recording will be available. So if you know someone who's interested in WhatsApp, feel free to share that along. Other than that, um, Feel free to also to contact the Office of Admissions, which is admissions with an S of the N at umsw.edu if you have any specific questions about applying to UNCW, or if you just have other questions, we can connect you with different departments. But I appreciate you all for coming to our Seahawk Talk um, uh, on behalf of Watson College of Education. And if you do have questions, feel free to just contact us. And have a nice weekend, and thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.